All right, in this video, I'm very excited because we're going to be exploring one of my favorite topics about production, which is automation. In the intro to Mixcraft series, we used automation to create a fade out on the master track, but in this video, we'll be exploring automation in much more detail and using it to turn this acoustic piano and string patch into an epic pad sound. Automation is really cool because it allows you to control just about any parameter of just about anything, so this is a whole lot of power, and with great power comes great responsibility. That is to say, don't overcook it, but it's a lot of fun to explore. Let's take a listen to the starting sound here to get an idea of what we'll be working with in this video. So not a bad place to start, but maybe not all that interesting. To begin automating, we'll go to the track we want to add automation to and click the toggle automation button here. By default, this will open the track volume, and just like the master track, we could use this to add a point and add another point to create a fade out. However, things will get a lot more interesting as we'll be using the same concept to control different parameters of different effects. Let's begin by going to our effects button and adding a reverb. If we take a listen right now, this is just a standard piano with reverb on it. Instead, I want to swell the reverb in after the initial hit. To begin automating the reverb, we'll go over here to the automation lane and click the track volume dropdown. From here, we'll find our track effect and find the parameter we want to adjust, in this case, the mix. Now, let's draw in some automation points to bring in the mix over every beat. And then we'll bring it back down to zero. From here, we can highlight the automation to copy it and then paste it in each beat. Let's take a listen to what we've created now. And if you watch the reverb, you'll see the mix come in over time. Let's add another control to control the decay of the reverb over time. To do that, we'll go to the automation lane and click the plus button. This adds a new automation lane where we can click the track volume dropdown and select a new parameter. In this case, we'll go to the decay. Now, let's close our reverb and start adding automation for the reverb mix and decay. Over time, I want the decay to get longer and longer and then go back down. So, we'll add a slow ramp up over the entire course of four bars. Now, let's delete the automation we've created here for the mix and make it a bit more interesting. To delete this automation, we'll click and drag to highlight it to where all the dots are purple and then click the delete key on the keyboard. Now, let's zoom in and get a bit more fine detail control over the automation. Let's start this off at zero and swell it up into the next hit. So, we'll automate the mix in between every hit of the chords. All right, we're done with that. Now, let's go back and take a listen. That's already sounding a lot more interesting. Let's add another effect to create more automation. Let's select the Tone Booster's parametric equalizer and use this to create a filter sweep over time. To do that, we can select band six and change the filter type to high cut. Now, we can adjust the Q factor or resonance to get this sloping a bit more like an analog synth filter. Now, let's increase the frequency so it's all the way open and has virtually no effect. Then, we can go back to the automation lanes and click plus to add a new automation lane. Once again, we'll go to the dropdown, find the effect, and then find the parameter we want to target. In this case, frequency 6. If we move this out of the way, you'll see it's all the way open, and then we can close this over time by adding a point at the top and bringing it all the way down. Let's go back and take a listen, and you can watch the parametric equalizer sweep over frequencies over time. Let's use this to create a rising pulsing effect throughout the four bars of this piano loop. Awesome, we've done that. Now let's go back to the beginning and take another listen.
In this case, I'd maybe like it to be a bit darker, and we can quickly adjust all the automation by clicking and dragging to highlight all of it, and then using the center handle here with the white handle to bring this down. This will scale all of the automation down. Let's take another listen. Let's make this automation clip a bit more interesting by going in and adding curves. To do that, you can go between any two points and click and drag the yellow ball. We'll do this for every other sweep to create some exponential rises. Let's go back and take another listen. Another great way to create automation is by recording automation automatically on a track. Let's add a new effect like a delay. Once we've set up our delay effect, we can go to any automation lane and right click and make sure the option to record all effect and instrument automation is checked. From here, we can arm an automation lane and then record and tweak any parameter of the delay and it will then create an automation lane automatically. We can see here that the mix for the delay has been added as an automation lane. Now, let's unarm the automation lanes and go in and control this with some more fine detail. Let's say we'd like to create an interesting step delay effect. To do that, let's select a region of the clip like the first bar and then drag this handle all the way down to zero. Then, in the following range, we can click and make another selection and then drag the handle up to mix this in 100%. Let's go back and take a listen. That definitely sounds a lot more interesting. Let's copy this automation by highlighting all of it and using Control C and then Control V to paste on the following two bars. Finally, to close off this sound, let's add one more reverb that's really big, like the Acoustica Pro Studio reverb, and increase the reverb time and wet mix to about 50%. This should give us a very big, lush, ambient pad we can use in our track. Let's go back and take a listen to the final result. This is sounding pretty cool, but there is a noticeable stair-stepping artifact in the filter sweep. To fix this, we can change the slope so that it doesn't ramp instantly from one value to another. This is something to keep in mind when you use automation, as it can create unwanted pops and artifacts. To fix this, we can click a point and zoom in, and then use our snap to grid settings on something small like 16th or 32nd notes. Then we can drag the peak back by one 32nd note, and although it's almost imperceptible here on the full scale, it will remove the stair-stepping artifact. Then we can go in and repeat this process for each of the points as needed. Now that we've gone in and removed that stair-stepping artifact, we should have a nice ambient pad we can use to start off our song. Let's take a listen to the final product. As I mentioned in the beginning, automation is a lot of fun and very powerful because it allows you to control just about any parameter of just about anything. It's pretty easy to get lost in and a whole lot of fun to mess with. Beyond using it for more creative approaches like we've done here today, we can also use automation for more common things like adding a delay throw to a vocal by automating in the mix of the delay over time. You can also use this to dial in different amounts of compression throughout a song or just about anything else you can think of. At this point, you should have a good handle on how to utilize automation to enhance your productions. And that does it for this video, so thanks for watching.